among the point guards uh, you might see in the 70s, you might see Clyde Frazier, you might see Tiny Archibald. Shooting guards, you might see Pete Maravich, Jerry West, Ooh. Ice, Iceman, small forwards like Rick Barry, Julius, John Havlicek, power forwards like Bob McAdoo, Billy Cunningham, Ooh. centers like Kareem, Elvin Hayes, Bill Walton, Bob Lanier. Mm. Uh, just some of those guys, mm. just some of the guys to consider. Um, but, I mean, this is what makes water cooler talk, you know, great. If, if people still have water coolers at work, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, Reggie, what is your initial gut telling you about, about this team of the 70s? Out of all the decades, to me, this was the hardest because you just mentioned like nine or ten guys, and I had a list of... 16 or 17 and what gets lost in the translation is that was at the time when there was a transition because obviously the NBA was just getting ready to to kind of evolve but you also had the ABA mm -hmm. and they get lost in the shuffle here mm -hmm. so I have some ABA players on my team so not only does it not have to be a starting five did I tell you you were the, the only NBA. one that would have gotten <laughs> that <laughs> you were the only one as well as Bones. Talk to me. Who you got? I got Dr. J, who played in both. He played right. in the ABA as well as uh, the NBA mm -hmm. in the 70s. I got the Big E, Elvin Hayes. Right. In the middle, I have Kareem. Mm -hmm. And then, this is a healthy debate, guys. All right, here we go. I always shudder when you All preface right. it that way. <laughs> this was the best player never to play in the NBA. I got Roger Brown. And a lot of you guys don't know probably who Roger Brown is, but you know who Roger yeah, I do. Brown yep. is. <laughs> one of the best yeah. players ever. Mm -hmm. And the other one, this was a little bit of a homer, but the big hand guy, Mel Daniels, mm -hmm. who was an absolute beast for those ABA Indiana Pacers. That was my best five. Smitty, you have this very... Uh it's, it's like you're pondering this and, and taking it all in. Yeah, because I'm taking offense to Reg that he said, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> he said, 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. you, you went there. Staying <laughs> correct. <laughs> but you went there after he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> you went to his high school. But, but I'm glad what Reg did to talk about the ABA. I mean, I grew up with George Gervin, Spencer Haywood, and those guys talking about the ABA and Mel Daniels. So I totally agree with Mel Daniels because all the – I didn't see him play, but everybody from my neighborhood, from my brother and my dad, talked about how Mel Daniels – I didn't see Roger Brown, but people talk about Mel Daniels as being one of those guys that were special. And for me, my list obviously doesn't have Mel Daniels because I thought we were going to NBA. I'm glad you did that, Reg, because those guys get forgotten. Mine is tiny. And I, George Gervin at the two – by far, from mm -hmm. a kid from the east side of Detroit, got a mm -hmm. chance to go follow him around and be his ball boy a lot of times in the Detroit Round Ball Classics. That's my two guard for sure. And then you have Dr. J and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Elvin Hayes. How about how about this guy Rick Barry? Huh? You know him? Well, I, this this uh, all decades thing kind of sucks for me because if I don't say him, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> No, none of you have that dilemma. And, uh, I, I just wanted to mention a couple of things because I, I like to dive into this stuff. The, the 70s were massively chaotic for, for the NBA. Reggie obviously mentioned the ABA after nine seasons it folded in 1976. So then you had the merger of what it was that the ABA, I think ultimately by folding, the ABA succeeded because – it introduced to the NBA what it needed. Right. This was no longer just the Celtics. Everybody thought of the NBA as, oh, crap, it's the Celtics, or it's whoever Will Chamberlain is playing for. And then all of a sudden, now you go from 14 teams to 22 teams. You have incredible parity. There were, there were eight champions in the 70s. Nobody won back-to-back. -back. So it was complete chaos in the 70s. But there was great play in both leagues that should be recognized and my list is and I just did NBA only Walt Frazier at the point guard position of course Tiny Archibald everybody talks about that year of leading the league in both points and assists which was remarkable but Frazier was incredible for the Knicks during that whole span uh, at the two guard I had John Havlicek people think of Havlicek in the 60s but really in the 70s John Havlicek was second in points 
in the de uh, sorry third in points in the decade and second in rebounds in the 1970s at the shooting guard position. And a lot of those minutes, as we know, coming as a six man. Uh, small forward, Bob McAdoo got some serious consideration. His years in Buffalo as a scorer were just remarkable. So, so sorry, Dad. Uh, <laughs> and, and what Julius so Irving obviously twice. meant to both leagues <clears throat> was incredible. Um, Elvin Hayes at the four spot, just, re, in, just a remarkable player. And then lastly, Kareem dominated mm -hmm. the center position, both in Milwaukee and when he went to the Los Angeles Lakers. So those would be my five. Only thing I disagree with is Tiny Archibald. At the point guard position, I know for that one year Brent talked about, but for the younger generation, it showed you that you can score the basketball, but you can also share and get other people involved, and I think that was good for the game for this next Can't generation. go wrong with either guy. Yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. I would like to put Pistol, Pistol Pete at two, because for me, he was the first, no offense, Brent, he was the first white guy with style and flair that I've seen. So why, why would I take offense to that comment? Because <laughs> you're a white guy. <laughs> well, well, hold on, Ernie. No, but Ernie, Ernie, Ernie's funny. Ernie is not white. Oh. <laughs> Ernie is not white. Ernie is light skin. <laughs> He's what? Ernie is Ernie light skin. Ernie. What up, cuz? What up, you're boy? Light boy? <laughs> what? No but, no, but my question to the fellow is: Was he the first white guy to have the flash and style and? between the legs and behind the back. I mean, because my well, favorite move was the move he did to Jerry West. Pete Maravich, he would take the basketball, right? And he would fake the pass. He would bounce it here, bounce it behind him, fake the pass, and you as a defender would jump, and he'd turn back around, catch the ball, and shoot it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that was a hell of a move. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I got to try that. No so I tried it in the game. Yeah. And Steve Coulter stole it. <laughs> <laughs>